Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. In our last episode we completed our Duna orbiting mission and today we are going to fly to EVE. We are going to orbit EVE and its satellite Gilly. As you can see we've opened many interesting parts with our science and now we are going to use them to upgrade our trusty Duna orbiter and make sure that it is capable of reaching EVE and back again. So here it is. And the first thing we are going to do is we are going to change our LV-30 engine to LV-909. And then we are going to proceed to add a couple of barometers although we're probably not going to use them. And we are going to change our ascent stage into something more powerful. So let's add this adapter and a couple of fuel tanks. And not enough. So let's take, add some ration wheels. And now let's do what we always do, the asparagus design. So move this here, add a couple of fuel tanks, add a couple more fuel tanks, and add four more skipper engines. Now add the fuel lines, just like that, and everything is done. Well, apart from adding struts, and control wheels so that we are not fumbling out of control and falling out of the sky. So here we do the strut business. You can never have enough struts. We also change our inefficient solar panels to the better ones. And there is something missing, except the ship's name. Mm. Solid rocket boosters. We need more of those. So let's take a couple decouplers, add them here and here. And now let's put our solid rocket boosters on them. Beautiful. Let's stage it all correctly and strut it together to make sure it doesn't fall apart on the launch pad. Looks nice, everything seems to be in order. Just a couple more struts here and there. And the launch clamps to keep it all safely on the ground until we want to launch. Good. Let's also add our solar panels to the action group and uh, go to the launch pad. Now we are going to time warp to our transfer window to EVE. This is going to take us approximately 135 days. So let's speed it up a little bit. The magic of video editing. And we are on the launch pad. And I actually found out why my videos and audio is so desynchronized. It's because the program I'm using to record is recording with variable frame rate and my editing software doesn't understand it. So, in 3, 2, 1, launch. And immediately we go down, because our thrust to weight ratio wasn't perfect, but we can throttle up and go into the skies. Because of this issue with the desynchronized audio and video, I had to basically mute 
all the audio in this video, except my voiceovers of course, but I hope I'll be able to fix it to the next episode, or maybe not next one, because the next one is already recorded, but to the one after that. For now, I can only say sorry for the inconvenience. And here we are, almost in the orbit. Our apopsis is 100 kilometers. So let's circularize at the appropriate altitude and start our transfer to EVE. Just a little bit until our circularization burn. 88 kilometers periapsis, 104 kilometers apopsis. So let's do a little correction. Beautiful. It's not exactly circular, but it's okay for our purposes. So now we are going to burn retrograde to the direction of Kerbin to make sure that we are going in the system. And we are doing our usual tweaking and playing with the maneuver node to make sure that we got our encounter with planet Eve. So let's move the node a little bit backwards and a little bit more. And it looks like we are going to have an encounter now. Just a little bit. And there. It's very, very wobbly encounter at the moment. So we are not going to tweak it anymore. We are just going to take it the way it is. And then we are going to tweak it somewhere between the Kerbin and Eve. Here we are, approaching our node. We are already properly oriented, just need a tiny correction. And we can safely execute this 1170 something meters per second burn. And it's already halfway there. And done. As you can see, we lost our encounter, but that is not a big deal because we can easily reacquire it after we leave the sphere influence of Kerbin. Let's just do that. Create this maneuver node and now tweak it appropriately. Just a little bit more. Make sure that our periapsis is low enough, but not too low. So let's create our alarm and time warp again. This time warp is approximately 22 days, but we already done it. And let's execute our maneuver. As you can see, I'm not using the full, full throttle of our engines because our full thrust is way, way too much and we don't need it. So let's create another maneuver node if the game lets us. Sometimes it just doesn't want to create maneuver nodes where you want them to be. And let's do the further tweaking of our approach. Uh, 
it's not yet equatorial, but we are okay with that. Another time warping maneuver, or however you want to call it. And now we are just going to wait until we enter the sphere influence of Eve and do our final approach change or correction. Looks almost perfect. Of course we want to arrow break around the Eve, but at this time I've chosen very very conservative approach of 97 kilometers which is barely skimming of the atmosphere and doesn't actually do anything to slow us down. So we will have to burn our engines at the periapsis and circularize manually. Well, not 100% manually, we are going to lower our apoapsis by using the arrow braking around the planet many many times, but the main capture maneuver will be done using this rocket engine. So let's do a little bit of science while we are here. We're going to take Jebediah on the EVA. Maybe. We're going to take temperature scans, that's for sure. So probably we're going to take Jebediah on EVA too. Or not. Uh, yes, here we go. Take the EVA report. And we are almost at the periapsis. And let's burn. Making our orbit around Eve and ending this episode. Thank you all for watching. Remember to like, dislike and comment this video in the section below. My name is Starlock and I will see you next time. Goodbye!